September 1944. After months of vicious fighting, tanks from the U.S. 3rd Armored Division reach the frontier of Nazi Germany, confident the war is in its final days. They are tasked with helping to capture the biggest Allied target in Western Germany, Cologne. By seizing this city on the Rhine River, the division can open a route into central Germany. Cologne has been bombed repeatedly. Street after street lies in ruins, providing the defending German troops and their Panther and Tiger tanks countless number of positions from which to ambush the Americans. There is so much bomb damage. Uh, the buildings were all collapsed, and the streets were very narrow. I recall uh, our lieutenant said, gentlemen, I give you cologne. Let's knock the hell out of it. The Sherman tanks are outgunned by Panther and Tiger tanks defending Cologne. But the Germans don't realize the Americans of the 3rd Armored Division will be attacking with a new weapon, the Pershing tank. The T-26E3 Pershing tank is America's answer to Germany's fearsome Tiger. This heavy tank boasts an impressive 100 millimeters of frontal armor and a lethal 90 millimeter main gun with a killing range of 1,500 meters. On March 6, 1945, it gets its baptism of fire in the streets of Cologne. We finally moved into this intersection. A German tank had come into the intersection to my left, and just far enough that he saw us and he backed away. I fired armor-piercing shells through the building. I figured maybe I will get a lucky hit. The top of the building collapsed and fell on top of the German tank. They couldn't turn their, their gun. They couldn't rotate the turret. There was so much rubble on there that they abandoned the tank and were captured. The Americans continue to advance towards the city center. They are guided by the towers of the medieval cathedral of St. Peter that loom over Cologne. You could see that from a distance, you know. You see the spirals up from the top of the cathedral. As they near it, the Americans' progress is hindered by a deadly enemy tank. The Panther is armed with a high-velocity 75-millimeter main gun capable of hitting targets over a 1,000 meters away. It has 80 millimeters of frontal armor, but sloped, this becomes effectively 145 millimeters of protection. Our Sherman tanks were not, not very good. They were no match for the Panthers, anyway. The Americans bail out of their burning tank, but three of the five crew die. To defeat the enemy tank, the Pershing must outflank the Panther. D Company radioed over to us and asked us to go down and get the German. Supposedly, his gun's pointing toward them, not at us, you know. As we went into the intersection, the driver had his periscope turned, looking up toward the German tank. As he came into the intersection, he saw their gun coming around to meet us. And instead of stopping, he floored the throttle down went roaring right out into the middle of the intersection. Unlike its opponent, the Pershing is equipped with a gyro stabilizer, a device that allows the main gun to be fired with accuracy, even while the tank is in motion. As soon as I could, I fired once. I hit him, and I fired again and uh, make sure nobody's going to be firing back.
The Panther tank burns for two days. By March 7th, the Americans mop up the last pockets of resistance, and Cologne's defenders surrender.